welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and as you can tell this is going to be quite a different video because there's no car sitting here that I'm about to announce that we're going to test it, take it out for road test. This video I want to explore the alternatives, what are we going to do when cars are getting, or petrol cars are getting banned, diesel cars etc. What is going to be the future beyond fossil fuels? Now, everybody say, well, it's electric. You're probably shouting at your TV or your computer. Is there an alternative to this dash to electric? And this was triggered by a conversation I had a few weeks ago, Lord Bamford at JCB, because he obviously, as a maker of machines, excavators, tractors, backhoe machines, all sorts of things, is very focused on where he's heading and they already have electric machines in the range they're looking at hydrogen and hydrogen fuel cell but is there another use of hydrogen and he was telling me all this and i said look i'd love to come and see it so he very kindly invited me up to visit jcb up in near stafford to the, the engine plant and also a, a demonstration part where he has some machines in use because he's looked at the future and realizes diesel we have to move away from fossil fuels he thought he was going pure electric or fuel cell for the bigger machines but no there's a more interesting answer and the engineers at JCB have come up with something really pretty special so I'm going to do literally a flying visit now up to Stafford and you'll join us in the prototype um, area up at the engine array where we'll have a look at a new design of internal combustion engine that is zero emission and could well be the answer beyond electric. Fantastic, yeah, allowing us into your lab here at Bamford <laughs> and seeing this hydrogen engine. What, what started you on this journey? Well, first of all, we've been making diesel engines here in this plant since 2004. Yes. And we developed the engines ourselves. It's our own design. And um, uh, so we knew about making engines. We've we made probably a million engines in, in that time. Yeah. That's a number. We're making 200 a day at the moment here in the UK and, and 200 in India. Um, so we know about making it. And also my, our family business was making agricultural machinery. And they made them before the war. Yeah. Too. Pretty basic ones compared to... To, to what we're making now. But with the future, everyone's going electric, and you were telling me that you have looked at electric, <laughs> and you can see some issues um, on the horizon. There are issues in our type of products. Yeah. Our type of products, a, a car, a passenger car, does about 300 hours a year, something right. like that on average. It's very, much of it is just going from home to work, and yeah. back again. And, and a bit further, but not a lot further. Which is completely it's different, isn't it, in the to construction? Totally different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, construction machinery is there to do a job. Somebody earns money owning that machine. So they want it working for a full day's shift. And a full day's shift on, say, a mini excavator may be four or five hours. Yeah. But on, on a backhoe load of thing, a JCB that people know as a JCB, yeah. it could be an eight hour shift. On a, an excavator, which might be earth moving, could be double shifted. It could yes. be 16 hours a day. Same it's with trucks as well, isn't same it? Same with know? trucks. Yeah. Trucks, yeah. particularly heavy duty trucks, are used for, well, in America, thousands of miles they're, they're, they're yeah. doing it in, in a day, double shifting. You know. And with an electric, you've got electric excavator. And you've experimented, how long do they run? The electric, uh, our electric range of machines will run for what we call a full day shift for them, right. which is probably about five hours right. or four hours, and then they need to be recharged. But that is enough for most jobs. So, you, yeah, I find this fascinating because the government's just rushing, they're not actually thinking of the practicalities. And you were saying you've also now you've put logging in all the vehicles. Code there, excavators, etc., JCB yes. machines. So yes. you actually have real data of how people are using the machines. We have data by the minute yeah. on uh, 
certainly 350,000 machines in the world. Unbelievable. And we know, yeah. and this is of great value to the customer, it's of great value to our dealer, yeah. great value to us because we, we make engines, we make uh, hydraulics, and, and it's terribly important to know what the work cycles yeah. are. And that's the big one, is the number of hours people yes. are doing. You're saying, I couldn't get over, there's 8,000 hours in a year. That's and, right. And in India, yeah. they're doing... In India, there are many doing 5,000 hours a year. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But, but think of a farmer in Britain, yeah. actually, with their main tractor. Uh, they may not do a lot in a year, but they'll do shifts of 18 yeah. hours, won't they? Yeah. When the weather's good. So it's, it's, well, it's a different thing to your saloon car. Yeah. Uh, a car and is used so little, really. Yeah. Uh, and how do, you know, it takes a long time to bring. We wouldn't be able to re recharge machine and make it useful in, in the time. No. Um, that, that's a problem. Uh, there are other problems as well. Yeah. Batteries are very heavy. They're also very expensive. So it's inflationary. Yeah. Uh, this engine, this hydrogen engine, won't be inflationary. And no. that's one hell of a plus, that is. That is extraordinary. So this is the same price as a diesel engine to, to make, isn't it? This it is. Yeah. It, it will be a similar price. I, I'm not saying it's exactly the no. same, but it's not times more. You, you know, if you use a, a hydrogen fuel cell, it's many times more. If you use batteries, it's many times more. And you've got um, a big weight impediment, which is, yeah. is uh, a real nuisance for us. It must be for tractors and it must be for trucks, I would think. Yeah, well, that, what got me when we were just talking upstairs, a 20 tonne excavator, if you were trying to electrify that, you were adding how much battery is it? Is it nine? It, eight tonnes at least. Of you battery. Of battery. To take, replace take the diesel the engine, engine. Put in batteries, it's eight tonnes more. Yeah. Uh, and what well, you've got cost, a yeah. lot, lot more. Yeah. Probably 70% uh, more. Yeah. The, the unit would be, plus you have to, um, all the components have to go up in size because yeah. the machine instead of being 20 tons is now 28 tons. Right. So you have to have bigger sprockets, bigger gears, all those things. And the price you were saying could almost double the time you finished. The price would double, and, yes. and then when you put it in, in the field, you can't use it for a full day anyway. You can't use it and there's a reason that machine is 20 tonnes, it is used on particular jobs. There are bigger machines, of course. Yeah. There's, there's even, we make 50 tonne machines as well, but the volume is not so high. Great machines, but I just, yeah, I just think this is a very interesting solution because a mechanic, today's mechanic, your engine shop, this is sort of conventional, but it has the possibility of being zero emission engine, which is what we're actually trying to do with all of this. The, this will be zero emissions, yeah. and uh, there's quite a lot of development to carry on with it yet, because it's in its infancy, yeah. but we deliberately want to show it to people, to show that there are alternatives, and this is a good alternative to, yeah. to batteries and maybe other ways of doing things. Yeah. Um, you know, it's been, hydrogen's been around a long, long time. You weren't showing me that. Sh I had no idea it was that early. That yes. they are actually working on a hydrogen powered engine, internal uh, combustion engine. Internal 18, I can't remember, 1804 or 1808. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. that's right. But what, what really strikes me that this is a fit, you could fit that in a digger, you could, and the operator almost wouldn't know there was any difference. They won't actually. I no. mean, the torque characteristic would be the same. Yeah. Power, so the power, the, the, the sound is different, but not a lot. Yeah. Uh, it sounds more like a petrol engine. And in terms of, he fills it in the same way, he has a nozzle, you fill it in the same way as filling your car. Yeah. Uh, a lot of pluses. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to fill it overnight or no. with a ba you know, battery, you wouldn't do. The, the, the sort of recharge time is like a conventional car then, isn't it? With yes, it is. So it's just, you're saying it's 350 bar tanks yes. in the place of a diesel tank or a petrol tank. Yeah. And it's the same sort of size to get it to run for it a full is. day. Yes. So, so actually, this is a very good solution. We now need the infrastructure to provide the hydrogen to this. It's, you can do this, you can't influence that bit. We'd like to influence it. More than anything, I want to influence 
the powers that be, that an internal combustion engine, yeah. that its days are not over, no. that there is still a great future for internal combustion engine for all sorts of reasons. One of them is people know how to, how to work on them. Yeah. We, we've got 770 dealers worldwide, and I don't know how many mechanics and yeah. engineers can work on it. They know how to do it. Yeah. Um, and they're reliable too, that's the other. Highly reliable units. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's the cost of them too. They, they are not uh, inflationary. I think that's that, a major problem. That is a key thing, isn't yeah. it? That you, it will, life would almost continue as normal. My combine, my tractor, yes, etc. Exactly. We're just going to have a hydrogen tank yeah. on the farm. Yes, it's going to be high pressure, we'll have a delivery, mm. but the, the zero emission effectively will have to come from clean energy. So it's this yes. idea of having wind turbines, electric, solar. Mm with electrolysis and <coughs> hydrogen out of water, isn't it? And it's, it's very possible to do it with electrolyzer and some, uh, I think Siemens in Germany are, are building some very big electrolyzers at, at the moment yeah. uh, that will be able to produce you know, thousands of tons of hydrogen. Yeah. And hydrogen can also be produced with, with uh, solar panels as well, solar farms. Um, so it has got you, but you're right, it's not there at the moment. No. The reason, you have a very interesting theory on the, why there's the rush to electric. I don't know who started this off, but I do believe that um, politicians worldwide, particularly in America and in Britain and probably in Europe, are mesmerised by Musk. Yeah. I think Musk was around at a time when Volkswagen was cheating. Yeah. And it's a combination of him with a fresh new way of doing things, yeah. and the Germans caught cheating, yeah. uh, that I think it's, it's given such a bad name to the combustion engine. Yeah. It's not the combustion engine that's a problem, yeah. it's the fossil fuels that are the problem. Yeah. And, and that's why I, I'm showing this, because I'm showing that it's possible to have an internal combustion engine yeah. wi without uh, having um, dirty fuel. Yeah, well, I, th I think that's a really good reason because I know there's a huge amount of the world who just will not be able to have that energy electric to charge up all this <coughs> fleet of vehicles in all sorts of ways. And suddenly, this is a feel very portable again that life continues as normal very as we've known it, isn't it? I can see there's a ch that in a city electric has a charge, so long as you can charge at home and you're doing low miles. But there's a whole lot of other uses of the internal combustion engine that require longevity. I, I think there's trains. Uh, Mr. Tavares, you know, who runs, yeah. I can't remember what the name of the company is, but yeah. it's changed. Yeah. It was Peugeot, yes. and, Fiat, and, Fiat and, and, and Vauxhall, yes. of course, yes. made a, a major speech three weeks ago in which he was talking about the inflationary element of electric cars. Yes. And we were talking about a family saloon. Vauxhall Astra is £14,000. Yeah. Vauxhall Astra Electric is £29,000. Yeah. This is highly inflationary. Yeah. Now, if you think everybody, we have 7,500 7 people in Britain come to work at JCB, they come how? They don't come on a bus, they don't come, they may come on a bike if they live nearby, but the majority of them come in their car. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so, that is, if it's going to be it, double to buy a family car, yeah. you know, not only are they having a problem buying a house at the moment, but buying a family car as well. I mean, be, these yeah. elements are, are socially changing, I think, are not, not thought of by, by politicians at all. Probably only because they, they're bothered about tomorrow's press. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the politician would ask, you know, the price is going to come way down as there's more mass production. Do you know, probably. it isn't true. We, we buy batteries from f about five different sources. Yeah. If you ask them what the price is going to be a year out or two years out, they're going to be more. And the main reason is that the rare earth materials that's in them, particularly lithium, cobalt, yeah. copper, and copper's doubled in a year. Yeah. Now, is it going to come down again no. just because the volume goes up? No. The, 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 the main components are such a big element is there's no labor in building batteries or very little so yeah. that you're really building a, a thing with with um, lots of these elements in yeah. it, and the cost is a, a world price it's not going to come down that's what I mean.
that's what I'm hearing from a lot of manufacturers as well. Yeah. yeah. It, it is. It's not good. I understand there's an engine running, so I think we ought to go and have a look at that. We are going to look at an engine. Hydrogen is terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Paul, nice to meet you. You've been developing this engine. You are the tech behind this engine. <laughs> yes. And this is a working example. Went on the dyno when first time? So this, was, this ran on the 8th of December 2020. Before we go into the details of the engine, you ought to just say you have experience of petrol spark. Yes, yes. Yeah. You know, in a previous life I used to work for Lotus Engineering. And uh, yeah. wow. a member of the team that worked on the uh, Billings the, uh, Toyota. Two zigzag engine. Oh right, so a big change from K-series to the uh, yes. Toyota engines. And the Toyota engine rev to 8.2, uh, right. and now we have uh, this engine that's a 2.2, two, so it's yeah. uh, yes, a quarter yeah. of the rev range. Right. And it runs in a, in a JCB generator, so it's self-sustained in its own cooling system, yeah. and a simple supply of hydrogen down there, down the stainless steel tube. The new ignition system mounted on top of the engine, similar yeah. to a gasoline. This is weird, because this, your JCB, I just associate with diesel engines, but now you have to put a spark plug in it. Yes, completely different. But you want the character of the engine not to just replicate where you are now. Very much so. Our, our yeah. customers demand a really low end torque value, a yeah. really high torque value. Um, so with that advanced boosting um, right. and the perfect mixing, we're able to achieve almost a carryover diesel like performance to give you that low end torque. And it's, I'm surprised, I thought I was going to see a smaller engine or something, but you're not. This is still a 4 point something. This is the, the standard 4.8 litre JCB engine. Right. The, the block is the same. Right. Um, it's the cylinder head where all the changes have been made to move to that, com away from compression ignition to, to yeah. spark ignition. Right. And the tanks are over there, Charlie. You know, that's how that's high, high that's what it looks like. Yeah, our, our focus was purely on the combustion. Yeah. Uh, and the infrastructure and supply of hydrogen was quite straightforward. So yeah. it delivered to site, plugged it in, and then we got on with yeah. unlocking that combustion. But what I, what I found interesting was if you get a, a litre of diesel to a litre of that hydrogen yes. in there, yeah. three times more energy yeah. by, per litre. By mass, it's, it's, it's more potent. Right. So, uh, three times. That's yeah. how we can run those lean mixtures and still get the same performance. Right. Even more importantly is, is the recharge time. Right. Refilling a tank or recharging yeah. a battery is yeah. so, so different. Yeah. That's what gives it that autonomy and yeah. rapid refill time. It's what we need in our sector. Yeah. So a fast charge on this is minutes. Isn't Very it? much so. Yeah. And, and the, the amount of energy, fast charge, if you will, uh, you've got it there for a day's work. Yes. And you get that instant. And, and these yeah. engines are work hard. That's what they're there for. Yeah. They're a product of hard work. Um, Does it sound different? Or it's it's slightly more towards gasoline. It's a slightly right. softer pressure rise inside the yeah. combustion chamber. Um, so yes, it's a slightly softer sound, but still distinctively uh, off highway. Yeah. And uh, a little bit of turbo noise is coming in now right. as well. Right. So doesn't it just look like a steam engine out the exhaust? Or? So under, under initial conditions, initial start, yeah. especially on a damp day, yeah. um, we are generating water with right. zero CO2 combustion. Um, so we do see some, some steam initially, yeah. but as soon as the, the, the exhaust system is warmed up and the engine is yeah. warmed up, we see nothing out of it. It's just water. No soot. It's just brilliant. No, a real, real uh, makes you think moment when you see a hydrogen motor and think, well, why aren't we yeah, looking at this in more detail as an, as an industry? Yeah, but yeah, great to see yeah. British engineers at the forefront at so last. <laughs> yeah, Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Uh, you must be pretty proud of this, aren't you? <laughs> Look at this here. Very proud of it. I'm, yeah. I'm uh, more proud, of, honestly, of my team. Yes. I mean, they've done one hell of a job in a, such a short space I, of time. It's staggering, isn't it? It, it yeah, is. It was yeah. six months since this first run, and a year, well, just over a year, isn't it, when you had that challenge. You were saying it was your son that really put you up to this. It's Joe Bamford who yeah. put, put me up yeah. to it, because he yeah. said it couldn't be done. Yeah. Um, he's had a passion about hydrogen for a long time, and he owns a bus company, and the buses uh, will be powered by hydrogen, um, which I think is most interesting. But it was fuel cell, wasn't it? He was first looking at it. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. This is very different to fuel cell. This is technology that we understand better. Fuel cells exist, of course. Uh, they're 
terribly expensive at the moment. It doesn't mean to say they always will. This is, is not a plea for British engineering, but I do believe we've got wonderful engineers in Britain. Yeah. And it, people sort of tend to... I think we've also got wonderful manufacturing businesses. Literally, thousands and thousands of people in Britain yeah. making things yeah. that are designed by engineers. Yeah. And we have an academy. We've had, we have 790 pupils daily at our academy doing engineering part of the day. And yeah. we've, we've got, I think, about 3,000 young people in the past who have been at our academy that know about engineering. So to, to me, I think it's important. Yeah. Um, we're the proof of it. Here, I'm say, here, here it, it is. is. Now, you also have a, 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 a bit of a car collection. Um, you have a, a similar addiction to me on a slightly bigger scale. <laughs> but um, oh, where does hydrogen play a part in uh, passenger cars or sports uh, cars? Or? Looking ahead. Yeah. Well, I, I think it should be very actively considered by the powers that be. I don't think the car manufacturers should be intimidated by Musk. Yeah. Um, I really don't. I think that the engines that they make are so inexpensive, so yes. they're not inflationary. Yes. So they should make them, this is my humble view, they should make them work with hydrogen. Yes. It's possible to do it. Because this is no, very this, much done to a job, isn't this it? This is a very heavy engine yeah. for our type of yeah. application. Yeah. You are looking ahead, what do we have to do in our business if we're not doing this? Yes. What do we replace the diesel engine with yes. if they're going to be bad? Yes. We have to find an alternative. This yeah. is our alternative. This is a very good one. Yeah. So, Bafa, thanks for showing me around. It's been absolutely terrific, eye-opening, as I expected. And um, it's nice to see a different take on what the future will hold. And I've just also one that's more familiar, so that's really good to see. Harry, thank, thank you very much. much. Well, thank you. Well, that was fascinating going around the engine shop like that and actually seeing the hydrogen-powered you know, engine working on the rig just like a normal engine. Um, Lord Bamford had to leave us at that point, um, so, but we disappeared up to their sort of proving ground and the real engineering prototype ground because obviously they put these engines into machines and they wanted to show us in action. First of all, we just went through the sort of what they've discovered in the last few years when they started on this journey to electric and alternative fuels. Um, they've been really successful with their little mini digger, sort of two tonne excavator and dump trucks and things. Because there, the, what they've discovered, they have all this data coming from all these machines around the world, 400,000 machines that they receive data on. And they've discovered basically the smaller the machines, the less hours they sort of do in their normal working day. Their they're light, light machines have light use, fairly obviously, but they're running for four or five hours a day. If you um, go up the weight scale, the bigger the machine they've um, got out there, the more work it does. Basically, if you're buying a 20 or 30 tonne excavator, it's a chopping expensive bit of kit and you've got to keep it working. And if they're building HS2 or you know, out in China, putting a mega city up or whatever, those machines almost have double drivers, then they're doing 10, 12 hours a day. And that is where they soon realized that they couldn't electrify, simply electrify, the fleet of JCB machines. It just doesn't work. The size of the battery gets huge, the cost goes ballistic, and they can't run for the 10 or 12 hours a day. So customers wouldn't buy them anyway. But how do, we, how do they move away from diesel fossil fuels? So then they looked at fuel cells as a possible alternative. They put one that I saw there, a 20 ton excavator working, works fine, but my goodness, there's some tech on board with the um, hydrogen fuel cells. I hadn't really worked out how they work, but they have these very thin membranes that, trans that there's fluid going around them. They're very delicate. They hate dust. Um, you've got to have deionized water at crazy cost of running around these plates. It's too much tech, really. But they are a very, in a very hostile environment and a very high cost. It doesn't feel quite the right solution. And that's where all heavy goods vehicles and things, they think they're going to have hydrogen fuel cells. What JCB found, well, you can do it, 
but extremely high cost. It, on a £130,000 20 ton excavator, it put the price up to around £300,000. So an, an increase in price of 130% putting a fuel cell on it. And that's why they suddenly hit on this idea, well, why don't we just power the engine with hydrogen? We know how to build an engine. The great thing about an internal combustion engine is we've had 100 and some in the years to perfect it, and it's really quite cheap to manufacture now. It, we have a very fine limits on it. We know it precisely how to engineer one. Very durable, has the load... Um, characteristics that you need in a um, lorry or a combine or a you know big car um, so we like that why not do it with hydrogen and they have found that they have done it easier than they expected to turn an internal combustion engine to a hydrogen internal combustion engine people used to complain about NOx etc that was because of very high running temperatures they, they've now um, discovered very lean technology to make it more efficient and not produce the NOx and the price of the engine is basically the same if anything it's ever so slightly cheaper than a normal diesel engine and they had an excavator working there and it was quite remarkable because it, it has the same range it just appears like we have a machine now I, I've got these combines of farm machinery you just could swap a hydrogen engine in there the only difference is you have obviously chucked the diesel tank away in your uh, combine and replace it with sort of cylindrical tanks to keep the hydrogen pressurized and that will then run it for the same number of hours as I expect a diesel um, engine with. The backhoe um, excavator they had there on demonstration carried five kilo tanks on it and that was an easy day's work for that machine. So it, it struck me this is a very simple alternative that is absolutely suits how we do things now. Hydrogen is a very transportable fuel like petrol or diesel. The only downside is it needs a pressurized vehicle to carry that hydrogen around and at the moment we haven't really looked into the mass volume um, transportation and infrastructure for hydrogen and that we have the technology to do it we're not mining you know rare minerals lithium batteries etc getting more expensive and don't do the job in this heavy machinery world so this hydrogen from my visit to JCB I couldn't see any downside from the machines I just couldn't get over this simple solution We've just got to get the transportation and the production of clean hydrogen and we have zero emission machines that go on to the future. So I found it really illuminating um, looking at this. Yes, electric has a place, but generally in lighter weight vehicles which don't aren't running around quite so many hours in a day. So for private cars, there is a, definitely a case for electric city cars, that sort of thing. But move up that weight scale, and hydrogen really seems to be a very good answer, and one that is zero emission, and it's technology we know, and it's cheap, etc. So I can't thank Lord Bamford enough, and going to GCB just showed me where hydrogen is, is running. We, I mean, diesel isn't going to get banned. They announced it today. 2040 is when the diesel ban's going in. So there's a lot of tech to go, but the power solution seems to be absolutely fine from what um, they found out at JCB. It's just a supply of clean hydrogen and how we move that about. But it's not too hard you know you can see the solution we just haven't had to think about it in the volume that we can uh, we would need it in so i hope you enjoy this sort of alternative video a look into the future how engines are going to develop over the years if you have well please keep watching keep subscribing more videos coming on very soon